welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn, and this is another foray into the wilds of Massachusetts, where we have uncovered Rena P. Espayet, um, who is a poet of tremendous experience and accomplishment, and wit and charm, and uh, other fun things, and... Uh, well, let's uh, give you a little background on her. She was born in the in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we never reveal birthdays. Of January twentieth, nineteen thirty-two. No, we never reveal it because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, she writes chiefly in English, uh, occasionally in Spanish. Um, she's been in a number of fascinating magazines such as Poetry, Hellas, The Lyric, Pivot, Sparrow, La Plum Review, and The American Scholar. A uh, great many anthologies, um, including uh, volumes from Storyline Press, um, Arte Publico Press, Harper Collins, and uh, I think I had a drink like that once. Uh, <laughs> and Globe. Let's see. Um, coming up, the uh, collection from Singular Speech Press entitled "Landscapes with Women: Four American Poets." Actually, I wouldn't have my landscapes any other way. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I know. Happens, uh, Let's see, and you have a collection uh, out uh, that came out in 1992, Lapsing to Grace, uh, brought out by Bennett and Kitchell. How did those two get together? Oh, I, I don't get into private matters like that. <laughs> oh, well, she's one. We were hoping to dish some dirt today. But that's <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, prizes, too. The 1996 Annual Award from the Plum Review. Uh, did they pay off in fruit? They paid off in bread, 500. Now you it? talking. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh, a couple of prizes from Orbis and the World Order of Narrative and Formalist Poets. Let's see if uh, you're a finalist in the Howard Nemirov Sonnet Competition. And uh, let's see, the Gustav Davidson Memorial Award uh, from the Poetry Society of America. And uh, came to Massachusetts, uh, Newburyport, in 1990. And before that, uh, she was a New York City poet. Uh, taught in the high schools, uh, founded the Fresh Meadows Poets. That's correct. Uh, which I understand is still going on. Um, they change the meadows twice a week so that they remain fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, served with the Queen's Council on the Arts for a number of years. And now up here you have a uh, another group, the uh, the Powwow River. That's correct, poets. named after a real river in the area. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, let's see, can and they change that twice a week. The river or the yes, group? Yes, the, the river. Uh-huh. Uh, is the river big enough to float a canoe? Uh, well, I, I think you should go measure. <laughs> mm, all right. Uh, I didn't bring my water wings, though, uh, on this junket because I wasn't uh, wasn't planning on it. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Poet to Poet. Thank you. And uh, I have babbled on quite a bit uh, with the resume. It could have it's exactly what you used to do in class. I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> What class is that, Brady? <laughs> the class in which you were my student in Jamaica High School, as you know perfectly well, Robert. Are you sure you want to admit that? I, well, I realize it's a terrible responsibility, but we have to live up to our responsibilities. <laughs> On Judgment Day, you're going to have a hot <laughs> I answer know for it. I know I that. Know uh, but right now, before that, you have to answer to us. And okay. what you have to answer to us with, so to speak, is a poem. Okay, you got one. Now, as you mentioned, I was born in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and one of the themes that keeps turning up in my poetry is the matter of uh, bilingualism and, and foreign language and foreign birth. Mm -hmm. So here are a few poems. I'd like to read a few in a row, if you don't mind. Ah, a, a poetic suite. Right. By um, <laughs> okay, this one is called Bodega, which, as anybody in New York knows, is the Spanish word for grocery. Bitter coffee, musty beans, caramel and guava jam, rice and sausage, nippy cheese, saffron, anise, honey, ham, rosemary, oregano, clove, allspice, and bacalao. Fifty years have blown away. Childhood falls around me now. Childhood and another place where the tang of orange sweets, golden on the vendor's tray, drifts like laughter through the streets. Memory is filament, weaving, weaving what I am. Bitter coffee, musty beans, caramel, and guava jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep going. And this one is called Bilingual Bilingue. 
My father didn't let me speak English in the house. He insisted on Spanish, so I wrote this poem remembering that. Bilingual, bilingue. My father liked them separate, one there, one here, allá y aquí, as if aware that words might cut in two his daughter's heart, el corazón, and lock the alien part to what he was, his memory, his name, su nombre, with a key he could not claim. English, outside this door, Spanish, inside, he said, y basta. But who can divide the world, the word, mundo y palabra, from any child? I knew how to be tum, dumb and stubborn, testaruda. Late in bed, I hoarded secret syllables I read until my tongue, mi lengua, learned to run where his stumbled. And still the heart was one. I like to think he knew that, even when, proud, orgulloso, of his daughter's pen, he stood outside mis versos, half in fear of words he loved but wanted not to hear. So. Was that the suite? Well, you want another one? Sure. I don't know. Sure, of course. Here's one called Where Childhood Lives. And this is a pretty accurate picture of my hometown. In my hometown, the nights are warm and flies are watchful at the net, as if remember posted guards along the borders of forget. And all night long, in slow exchange, a dialogue of plunk and plink from leaky roof to rusty basin echoes what the raindrops think. Along the wall where lizards hunt, mosquitoes urge their long complaint, and pious photographs commingle the dead, the living, and the saint. One rooster, two, then five or six from hill to valley rout the night, and maids sigh up from creaky springs to morning prayer and kitchen light. Along my narrow, shuttered street trot little donkeys gray as dust, stopping to nuzzle here and there at orange peel and cracker crust. And morning takes the river road down to the bank where childhood lives, where stones and water know my name and stroke me with diminutives. And that's the sweet. <laughs> well... I never had a hometown like that. No. Mine was kind of brick and asphalt and uh, and trash cans and people doing strange things in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, it pops up in my poems every once in a while. Uh, basically, what I'm what I'm interested in getting into right now is uh, having started the Fresh Meadows poets and the Powwow River poets. Um, how do you go about then starting a a nonprofit arts group? It's not easy. It really is not. Uh, you have to, first of all, and this is the easy part, mm -hmm. find people who are interested in belonging, find the poets. And it seems to me that poets are everywhere. There are poets everywhere. It's just a matter of finding them. Once you let them know that you're around and that you're collecting them and that you want to do something all together, they pop out. And then after that, you start the hard part, the paperwork, the application for funds, the publicity, the finding places in which to read, and so on and so on. But it's, it's tremendous fun. It's a lot of work, but it's great fun. Mm -hmm. And how about all those personality conflicts we all get into? Oh, I'm, I'm going to take the Fifth Amendment on that one. Oh, come on. <laughs> we, want to, we want to dish some No, the truth, is, the truth is that I have really encountered very little of that. I, I have found poets to be warm and friendly mm -hmm. and uh, amenable to, uh, to life with one another. Then I truly envy you, <laughs> because I could tell you a few stories of my own, but uh, they don't want to listen to me, they want to listen to you. So if you won't dish dirt, uh, how about some more poetry? Sure. Well, here is a poem based on observation. I was in a shopping mall, and I saw two nuns roaming around. Two nuns at the mall. Black and white and black, they fall upstairs to better dresses, where I spot them later fingering cocktail silks. The short one wears wire rims like a double yoke. The taller one wears amber freckles, whose color comes and goes. They are still young. They laugh in unison discreetly through lingerie and up a flight past furs and leather, domestics and layettes, and out of sight, all white and black and white. Now there's a thought. Uh, 
Nuns in a leather shop? Nuns in the leather shop. I, I kid you not, they were there. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they actually <laughs> purchased. <laughs> oh, well, you don't have a sequel poem for that. No, I don't. I, I lost track of them, unfortunately. But oh, I could well. go back and try again. How about a charge card slip? The <laughs> no such luck. All right. Um, what else is there? Well, I have a poem about marriage here, which is a good mm -hmm. thing to write about. This is called That the Jewelers. Yeah, uh, this was written a long time ago, as you'll see by the numbers. Uh, actually, we will achieve our 45th anniversary this summer, but this is a while back. At the Jewelers. My wedding ring, after these 36 good years of service, has released its hold on three baguettes. Well, aging will unfix memory, teeth, the stars, and prongs of gold, the jeweler says. He reads through his loop's tip as through a telescope what cosmic powers decree for small and great. Galaxies slip like diamonds from their place and we from ours. But no harm done, marriage is hardy stuff, designed to shine with use and bend with stress and should endure, tempered with care enough, a full two lifetimes, not a minute less, and where, for ornament, itself alone, should every ring on earth lose every stone. Hmm. Which brings up an interesting question. You said earlier that the marriage was a good thing to write about. Is it a good thing just to write about or live or live through or oh, both I, or what? I recommend it highly. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. And your your husband is Alfred Moskowitz, who is yes. a sculptor. Yes, we, he is. If we could just pan the camera over this way for a second, I'd like to... Uh, Give a little sample of uh, of Alfred Moskowitz's work because we just happened to slip it in here. And uh, the charming young lady, if you write in later, I will provide the phone number <laughs> on request. But it is a 900 number. I feel I should warn you that. And um, let's see. Let's do one more little poem, and then we'll take a brief break. Okay. This is called Brown. Brown of the sparrow hopping where seeds lie, of the fat woodchuck foraging, and brown of marsh in April mirroring the sky. Brown of my mother's eyes, of my still town in heavy rains, of rust, of nested down long after flight, of chocolate on chill nights when I was young, of oak, of pews, of crown around God's wounded brow by altar lights of log in the cold hearth the match ignites like memory, of dried blood on a sheet, of names on a long list the stone recites, brown of the earth that waits stroking the feet, brown of late shadows gathering, of loam, of that first sleep, of rest, of going home. Mm -hmm. And we're going to brown out for just a moment, but we'll be back with more of Rina P. Espayet, so don't go away. 